My Lords, uh, I should probably declare an interest as an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, and I've also had some responsibility in connection with uh, the other matters that are referred to in this bill. My Lords, the simple analysis, so far as I'm concerned, is this. A person who has an objection, let me take it to abortion. A person who has an objection to abortion thinks that it's wrong uh, to carry out an abortion. Generally speaking, there is, of course, a provision limiting that in connection with uh, uh, where the mother's life is at risk. The, the present law does not uh, allow conscientious objection in that respect. And that, I believe, is a very uh, general um, realization uh, of uh, what the conscientious objection will be. But the basic conscientious objection is that it is wrong, in the general case, uh, to perform an abortion. Uh, and the question is, to what extent one should be required uh, to do what is uh, contrary to one's belief, to do what one is required to think uh, the conscience requires, that it's wrong. They believe it's wrong, and therefore, in my uh, submission to your lordships, it would be right that they are protected from doing what they think is wrong. Now, of course, I'm very familiar with the judgment of the Supreme Court uh, and Baroness Hale, uh, whom I, I respect particularly uh, uh, because of various reasons, which I won't uh, go into at the moment, but I respect her judgment very much indeed. And it is a judgment on the Act of Parliament as it was. The Scottish Court, uh, three judges of the, of the Court of Session, uh, decided that the wider interpretation was possible, uh, and they uh, were in favour uh, of the, uh, Mrs. Dugan and the other lady. Now, the situation uh, was a particular one, that these ladies had been in the health service for a considerable time, uh, and they were happy to do what they were doing, uh, and they didn't have to do anything that they thought was wrong. The arrangements were changed, uh, and then they were required to do something that they thought was wrong. And that was where the matter came into the courts. Now, my lords, I have been in correspondence with the Doctors for Choice. They kindly sent me an email explaining what they thought, uh, and I uh, replied to ask some more detail of what they were thinking. And what it comes to is this that they believe that the National Health Service depends to a substantial extent uh, on people doing what they believe to be wrong. Now, I, I really find it very hard to see that that can be right. On the other hand, I do not think, and I, the minister may be able to tell us, I do not think that the amount of conscientious objection to these various um, items referred to in this bill is very large. Uh, the numbers, I don't think, are all that large, but um, let's assume that there's a substantial number. Then what they're saying is that it's necessary in present circumstances to depend on people who are serving in the health service uh, to do what they think wrong. And so far as I'm concerned, that's precisely what the conscientious laws of this country for many years have been, that it is not necessary and not right to force people as part of their employment to do what they believe to be wrong. Now, it's said, and uh, a number of your lordships have mentioned this, that, uh, of course, it will uh, uh, cause some problem for some people. Uh, the, the the point I think that we have to make is that the obligation to provide these services is not on the employee but on the health service itself and therefore they have the, the, the responsibility of making the necessary arrangements to accommodate the views of those who think that these particular activities are wrong. And I do not believe it is right that the health service or indeed any other 
service should rely to a substantial extent for its success on requiring its any of its employees to do what these employees think to be wrong. For that reason, I support this bill. Uh, uh, of course, the, the bill is subject in the detail of it uh, to amendment if necessary, but so far as I can see, the actual phraseology is not very far from that which was adopted by the Court of Session in Scotland uh, as the interpretation that they thought should be placed on the Act of Parliament as it was.